Well, joining me now is the former government chief scientific advisor, Professor Sir Mark Walpott, who's a member of SAGE, and Professor Herb Sewell, who's Emeritus Professor of Immunology at Nottingham University. And, Professor Sewell, you're one of those who has concerns about the delay in the second dose for the Pfizer vaccine. Let's just make clear, we are just talking about the Pfizer vaccine, aren't we? Not the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine, which most people are going to get in, in Britain. Just explain what your worry is and what's it based on in terms of evidence. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got a problem with your sound, uh, Professor Sewell. While we try and work that out, um, let me just come to uh, Professor Sir Mark Walport. Um, now, the, there have been lots of concerns about this. Um, what, you, why do you think the current dosing schedule is correct? Well, look, the first thing to say is that supplies of vaccine are the rate-limiting uh, step at the moment. And so we will only achieve the maximum public health benefit if we get the maximum number of people effectively immunised. And the good news is, as you've said, over 14 million first doses have been given. Now, it's perfectly true, the vast majority of vaccines require two or sometimes more doses. The first one's called a priming dose, and the later one is a booster dose. And everyone who has had the first dose will get that second dose. Um, as you've said, the evidence from AstraZeneca is that there is considerable benefit from the first dose. And in fact, the evidence from that says that if you delay giving the second dose, you get better benefit. And so waiting for 12 weeks gives you a better uh, a boosting response than doing it at a month, for example. Um, in the case of the... Now, Pfizer we can bring in uh, Professor Sewell. So let, let me just bring, him, bring in okay. him first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask you sure. to rebut that. Professor Sewell. Yes. So, as I was saying, Krishnan, my colleague and I, John Robertson, we've been raising these concerns about the extension just to the Pfizer BioNTech. And we must not conflate that with the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Both of these vaccines are excellent if they're used to schedule. The problem for us is that the UK has almost worldwide unilaterally decided to extend the Pfizer vaccine out to 12 weeks with no evidence and no scientific base. I caught a little of um, Mark's comments about the Oxford, about the vaccines doing better after 12 weeks. That evidence is only there for the AZ Oxford vaccine. It is not there for the Pfizer vaccine. So what they have done, they've done a lot of suppositions and, and basically conflated the Pfizer vaccine with the Oxford vaccine, that is fallacious. And one of the points I'll they make... Also that... looked, how, how, haven't they also looked at the Moderna vaccine data, which is very similar to the Pfizer, which tells us a little bit more about uh, the efficacy after the first three weeks and have yes. suggested that that probably also applies to the Pfizer vaccine? Yes, and, but the important thing is when you talk about the efficacy out to 84 days or 12 weeks, both MNR, M mRNA vaccines have clearly established they're very efficacious if given the second dose either in three weeks or four weeks. The data beyond that from the UK has been based purely on assumptions and modelling. There is no data to tell you that it will be as efficacious out at 84 days. And indeed, we're now getting a okay. lot of evidence that it, it will not be. And this, the assumption from the UK that it's 90% efficacious was based upon what was poor modeling. And with modeling, what, if you put in poor data, you will get out poor results. So the 90% is Some not mark. So the first thing to say is that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, and that's a really important point. So uh, we know that the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine does show first dose effectiveness. Uh, broadly, if you look at the graphs from the uh, controlled trials that have been done, you get evidence from effectiveness from about 12 days after the first dose. And it's important for everyone to realize that it takes time for immunity to develop. Um, we know from immunological principles that actually the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is giving a very good immune response, as is the AZ Oxford vaccine, and those persist. And so knowing what we know about the immune system, 
uh, knowing what we know about the effectiveness of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, there is every reason to think that it will be efficacious. Now, Herb is correct that there isn't the evidence yet, but it is being collected all the time, um, and we will find out soon enough. Can, can I suggest, Mark... Can I just ask you some, Mark, given, given that... Yeah. Given it's going so well with vaccines rollout, mm. would it make sense to review this advice? Because as younger and younger people get their first dose, wouldn't it make sense to actually give the older people who are more vulnerable their second dose earlier? The answer is the evidence is being collected all the time. And the case is that actually for all the vaccines, there's relatively limited evidence over and above the fact that there is a good... Uh, immune response, that these vaccines are as, as effective in elderly people as they are in young. And again, um, uh, one has to go on the evidence that we have. Um, and the, the one thing that's for sure is that if you don't get a vaccine, you're not protected. Um, and to use a sort of metaphor okay. from a, a different system, as it were, do you want uh, 100 cars with uh, two front lights operating or 200 cars with one front light illuminating them? Christian, Briefly, Professor I, I, Sewell, if you will. I have heard those comments from Mark, and beyond this philosophical uh, thoughts, the key thing is there is evidence. He says there is no evidence. There is a mounting uh, level of evidence. So we have from Israel, a country that we all recognize is doing tremendously well, using the Pfizer vaccine at the prescribed schedule of three weeks between doses, and they have analyzed data from over half a million people. And what they have shown is that the efficacy is no better than 50 to 60%. We have data coming out, we understand from PHE, which is also showing it's 60%. So there is evidence out well, there. It is not as efficacious as claimed by the UK government. I'm afraid we're out of time on this, but we're gonna to have to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us.